Welcome to this MuseScore tutorial on importing MIDI files and then cleaning them up. MIDI files are a valuable resource for arrangers because many popular music works can be found freely available online. Things like Bach's Jesus Joy of Man's Desiring and even UB40 Red Red Wine, and both of these we'll be looking at today. MuseScore has the ability to read these MIDI files and create music notation from them so that we can work in something that is more what we're used to than the traditional MIDI files that we might load into a DAW, for instance, a digital audio workstation. So if you're more comfortable with music notation, MuseScore is a great way to go with MIDI files. And MuseScore has some fantastic features that make it, if not easy to work with, at least possible to work with MIDI files in MuseScore. So let's start. In MuseScore, I'll close this startup screen and simply drag in my MIDI file. There are a few things to take note of first. Obviously, this looks pretty horrendous right now, but we can see that there's a harpsichord, which it's called Piano 1 in its staff name, using the sound of a harpsichord, and so the musical instrument it's chosen is a harpsichord. We can also change that if we want to. But we have a harpsichord, a piano, soprano and alto, and a tenor bass, so SATB choir. It's already great that MuseScore has given us the time signature, the key signature, and some rhythms, although they don't look fantastic to use. However, this panel down here is really, really useful to be able to sort out what we need. We would certainly want to go and listen to this first to see what we're dealing with. Okay, easy enough. Something very important to note with MIDI files and MuseScore is that you don't want to make any changes here yet until you've made all your changes here. Because if you need to make any changes to this importing section, which it doesn't actually say that this is, but this is the importing section, you then click Apply, and it will discard any other changes you may have made, like maybe taking something up an octave. You click Apply, and that will it will ask you, do you want to save it? But it'll save it somewhere else. So in this case, I'm going to say discard, and it will reapply, re-import the MIDI file back into MuseScore and make it a, now a MuseScore file. All right, so let's see some of the things we can do. One of the first things we want to do is certainly get rid of this nine tuplet. That is just completely unnecessary. In the import settings, we have each instrument listed or from each track of the MIDI file listed in here and the different settings that we can use to import it. And at the top is one for all of our instruments or all of our channels. So in our tuplet section, I'm going to say we want only triplets. That will apply to all of them. And if we click Apply, it re-imports it. And that's already looking a lot better. Sure, there are things we can change. However, we don't want to change too much yet. We want to get everything fixed up as we need it first. MIDI files are really perfect, and so there will almost always be something that we need to fix up. In this case, it might be making these crotchets to make the score look neater and to see what we're dealing with. There will also be things like these double notes with a tie over. We sometimes also find these multiple voices creeping in, which just make it look unneat. Something we can do there is just select one voice. Let's try reapply that, discard the changes, and in this, in this case that has not solved our problem. However, we can clear, quickly see where we need the correct notes. So yes, it's still not perfect, but it's getting there a lot faster. And it's giving us notes, rhythms, tempo even, a lot of things that we may need as an arranger. Right, let's close this one and have a look at the other one. If possible, this looks even worse than the other one, and it's mainly because of this drum kit. Another useful thing is to look at this in continuous view, and we can see what we're dealing with. Again, I'll just play it from the beginning and listen to what we've got. Because 
because I'm only wanting a little snippet of this for my for my orchestra to play uh, or to arrange for my orchestra, I'm going to leave it there and see what we can deal with in that just that section. The melody is not too bad. There's a couple of weird rests, but I would kind of want to keep it in that range. Again, we have a time signature and we have a key signature and we have a tempo. The bass also is not too bad. In fact, it's pretty good. Uh, there's a problem where we have multiple voices. So again, I'm going to find the bass and tell it to only give us one voice. There should not be multiple voices in a bass part. That just is pretty common sense. I'm also going to change this to acoustic bass and reapply. Let's go back into continuous view. And I think we've got a slightly better bass. Sound. That's just personal preference. Uh, you can change it to whatever you want. And later on, you can again change it. I just want to have something that I can really listen to. The same way with these extra, this extra information, uh, it's best to just leave it alone for now. We can ed go and edit that later once we've decided on our import settings for the MIDI file. Okay, so bass is looking good. We have steel drums. We have a rain effect sound. We have the melody on the muted trumpet. But the big problem is the drums. We've also got this tin whistle, but that only comes in later, so I'm actually going to completely ignore it for now. Drums are a problem. Most people looking at this kind of table of importing down at the bottom may go to quantization and say, ah, yes, I don't want sixteenths, or I want sixteenths, but this is clearly not giving me sixteenths. There's something about this drum channel that MuseScore is not liking that puts it a hemi demi se hemi demi semi quaver tripleted off every beat. It's just ridiculous. So ideally we want to quantize this. For some reason, MuseScore doesn't like quantizing things like that. It always wants to take the smallest value. So hopefully that will be changed in a, in a later update. However, they do have this is human performance block that we can tick. And when we apply, the drum kit looks magically sorted out. It is a huge deal better than what it was. And that's allowing everything else to be spaced much nicer now. However, have a look at our melody. And we've lost all of those nice rhythms that we had in the trumpet part. Unfortunately, there's no way to make the drums is human performance without making everything a human performance. So we're going to have to do a little bit of extra work here. But while we're still in the drums, there are some other great options for arrangers. Here's one of them. Split staff. If I choose split staff on the drums, it will actually separate every single sound into its own staff. Again, go back to continuous view so we can see what we're dealing with. And here we have drum set. There's our shaker. Um, there's our hi-hat, snare, side stick, and the kick drum. So we can actually remove some of these and move them around to different sounds that we may want. Um, it's a very powerful feature to be copying individual tracks or individual uh, sounds at a time instead of the whole drum kit. Uh, cleaning up the whole drum kit. Let's just show you that again. Cleaning up this drum kit, it's not really very playable for an, for an actual drummer. There's lots of extra sounds in here. So we may need to split it out, do with whatever we want to do with it, and then perhaps condense it back later again. Um, I've made a video on condensing things before. All right, so let's deal with this problem of having the drum kit looking nice, the melody not or if we take off the human performance. I'm going to save this one, and I'll save it as the drums file. Now I'm going to untick that human performance, and I'm also going to untick the drums. Apply that. We don't have this drum staff anymore. Now I can take all my other settings that I've used, and let's save this. Let's save it as and UB40 Red Red Wine, but we'll call it full score. I know this sounds like a bit of a workaround, but now we just need to add an instrument with I. In percussion, unpitched, we'll add a drum set. Double click, and it appears in our score. OK. Now we can go and open our drums, MuseScore 
part. There it is. Click on the first bar, Control, Shift, and End. We'll select to the end of the whole staff. That's Control, Shift, and End. Copy with Control C. Go back to our full score. Click on the first bar, Control V, and we have drums pasted in. And this is the one that we would be working with now. We'll notice there's a couple more things we can still clean up. Just remember, now that I've decided this is the one I want to work in, I don't actually want to use this anymore. So I'm going to close this and we'll just work in the score that we've got here. There are things like this. Um, that was clearly a crotchet with a quaver on it and MuseScore decided, well, or it, it found in the MIDI file that it was a slightly longer note and so it tied it over. Mm. It's a simple matter to just delete that note. And we may find that in a few places. There's another one. It's up to us to decide if we want to keep that as an F flat or an E natural. Uh, I think I tend toward an E natural myself, so I'm going to use J to change that to an enharmonic equivalent. Not D double sharp though. Let's change it to just an E natural. Thanks. Thanks. That'll be great. Which automatically then changes that last one to an E flat. That's a really nice little upkeep thing. When we look later on in this, we'll see some triplets. Uh, again, those are looking pretty horrible. We maybe should have made those into a single voice. Um, we can decide now if we want to keep these kind of rhythms, which we can presumably just make that a quaver, already looking neater, and equally a minim. Or if we want to actually change these things um, into a triplet rhythm to be to be a bit smoother and less poppy. But now that I've got the MIDI file pretty neatened up, especially for the first eight bars or so, I could uh, copy this bass line into somewhere else. I can take the chords and expand them into other instruments. There's so many options. Now that the information is in MuseScore, there's a lot I can do with it. And that is the power of MIDI files.